hi, Martha. Welcome. Thanks so much for joining us today. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Ladies Power Lunch Show. We're inviting you to grow your business smarter and, of course, to live your optimal life. We are very excited to have Martha on the show today. Martha Wilson is an executive leadership success transformation coach. And those are all the words that I love because they really embody the idea that we're trying to put forward that leadership, this is not your grandfather's leadership. We're talking about something new, something different, something exciting, and something that will help you to move your business forward. For those of you who are not as familiar with Ladies Power Lounge, I want to welcome you. Sita, you, thank you so much for tuning in today. You can join our absolutely free community just as long as you fulfill one little thing. If you're the kind of person who believes that linking arms with other entrepreneurs, other small business owners, other women in business, other women in leadership roles is something that's going to help all of us then we welcome you. All you need to do is go to growsmarternotharder.com slash Facebook, and you can join us over in our Facebook community where we're having conversations like this every single day. So welcome, Martha. Can you tell everybody who you are and explain to us about the wonderful things that you're doing in the world? Ah, oh, thank you so much, Dr. Debbie. I am so excited to be here with you today. And let me just get this right here on the table, right up front. Yes, I am a former spy turned transformational success coach. And I am all about the inner work that makes the outer work work. So I work with leaders, coaches, entrepreneurs who really wanna make a bigger difference, but they're sick and tired of sacrificing themselves in the process. And what I do is I show them how to use those limiting beliefs that have been holding them back to actually flip them on their heads and access the power and the brilliance that's hidden inside of them so that you can make a bigger difference in the world and actually enjoy the ride along the way. That's that's pretty much everything that we stand for here at Ladies Power Launch. So it's no wonder that you're our special guest today. So you, you, you just teased it a little bit, you know, you mentioned that you used to be a spy. Hello! Stop the presses. Let's go back a little bit because I'm sure inquiring minds want to know, all our viewers want to know, all our listeners want to know. So what was your path? I mean, what took you to be, well, guys, I know a little bit about this story. One of the things I love about Martha is that I used to read Nancy Drew stories when I was a little kid. <laughs> so like one of my favorite people in my mind. But Na Martha, can you, I almost called you Nancy Drew just now. <laughs> Can you share with us what took you into the spy world and then what took you back out and how did you come full circle to be working with entrepreneurs, women in business, women in leadership at this time? Yeah, wow, that 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 is a lot and I will do the best I can to to get down. I will I will tell you in all transparency how I got into the world of espionage um, was a long and convoluted path and not one that I planned on. It was just something that kind of unfolded for me. But what was interesting was when I, I, I applied for the position because number one, I did believe in the mission of the organization. I, I believe in the mission of creating an environment so that all humans can pursue their own dreams in whatever form that means for you, whether it means doing it inside an organization, whether it means running your own business, whether it means staying home and raising your kids. I don't care. What I care deeply about is what you do in your living and creating the space and the framework for you to have the freedom to do that. It, it's that energy and passion that pulled me into CIA in the very beginning. But what kept me there and what, what, downstream pulled me into what I was doing, what I am doing now is the recognition that I've always been really good at understanding what's going on behind the scenes for somebody. What's going on behind the part that you can see? What's actually driving their behavior? What's actually driving their intentions and their motivations? So it's, it's interesting that while I was really good at doing that for other people, about 16 years into my career, I found myself sitting at my desk one day, head in my hands, 
I had just gotten off the phone with another miserable phone call with my boss where she had proceeded to rip me a new one about everything my team and I were and were not doing that was not getting the results that she wanted. And her answer to the situation was, well, Martha, just work harder. And that was the thing that had me sitting there with my head in my hands because I didn't have any harder left to work. I was doing everything I had always done that had worked in the past, that had made me as successful as I was up until that point. Only now it wasn't working anymore. And I didn't know what else to do. And I'm sitting there with my head in my hands and I, and I hear myself say, I can't do this anymore. And the part that was so heartbreaking about it for me was I had been trying. I had been trying everything I knew how to do. You know, I had had the productivity tools. I had the time management tracker. I had the scripts for how you have conversations with team members. I, you know, I, I had all that stuff. And then I had taken all of the personality profiles and Myers-Briggs and Strengths Deployment Inventory. And oh, by the way, I'm certified in most of those things. The reason I got certified in them was because I kept thinking all these tools are telling me this is the perfect job for me. But if it's so doggone perfect, why am I so doggone miserable? And worse, why do I feel like such a failure? Why is it not working? So as I sat there with my head in my hands, <laughs> I heard the voice of an old army captain <laughs> echoing through my head mm -hmm. where he said to me, Lieutenant, when in charge, take charge. And that was the moment I realized I, I had this, this, this lightning bolt moment. Nobody in that organization cared whether or not I was happy. And the other side of that is nobody in that organization cares whether or not I'm happy. So what if there's a way, what would need to change? What would need to shift? How about I create the career and the life that I want that makes me happy. And at the time I was doing it inside my own organization. And that was in fact, when I got my first coaching certification. And again, in the interest of true transparency, my very first coaching certification was not because I had any desire to become a coach or become an entrepreneur. It was because quite honestly, I was trying to find a way to save myself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And as I did that, what I discovered was that all of the skills and talents and capacities that had actually made me so successful as I had been up until that point, hmm, guess what? All those things are still there, but there was another level. There was another, another aspect of me, another level to my leadership ability, both internal and external, that I had no earthly idea that was there. And it was hidden inside exactly the thing that was going on right here between these two ears that was keeping me stretched thin and burned out right there. That's how it unfolded. So I went on from that point to reinvent myself inside that organization, had the highest cash award of my career after I did that, mm -hmm. then realized, yes, I love my organization. And now I've reached the point that the greatest service I can be to it is from the outside of it, which is when I, what I call graduated from federal service and then started my own business after a little short stint in corporate America as well, um, just, for, just for good measure and flavor. So that's what brought me here. But the underlying piece is still this intense passion to create the space, both internal and external, for every single human to live the life that they want to live. Because quite frankly, life is supposed to be fulfilling, not just full. Oh, I love that so much. And you know, what I love about your story, Martha, is that so many of our listeners absolutely identify with feeling like we're working harder, we're doing more, we're doing all the things, we're checking all the boxes that we were told to check. And somehow that happiness, that fulfillment isn't there, but we're really, really full. And so that's why the name of this show is, yes, grow your business, but do it in a smarter way. And while you're at it, how about you also live your optimal life? So this is, this is an amazing story that you share. Now you've gone from working as a spy, <laughs> gives us tingles just thinking about you being our very own Jack Barr. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Those are movies. 
to working in corporate, which is something that I've done and something that definitely resonates with a lot of our listeners to working with one-on-one clients. So who are the kinds of people that you are best able to support in the role that you're in right now? Oh, great question. Thank you for that. Yeah. The people that I'm best able to serve are leaders, coaches, or entrepreneurs who know you are meant to make a bigger difference. So what I want you to hear in that is it does not matter to me whether you are working inside an organization or you are working as an entrepreneur doing your own thing. What I care deeply about is what you're doing in your living. Are you bringing your greatest contribution forward? Are you doing that? And and, and in fact, this is one of the ways that you know, because if you're putting out and you're not getting back in equal measure, That's how you know it's not yet your greatest contribution. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this is what I help you do. So going back to the spy thing, you know, I'm all about patterns, uncovering patterns. And as a spy, your first 90 days on the ground in any new city is all about understanding what does normal look like here? How, how do things work here? You know, how does traffic flow? How do people move? You know, At six o'clock in the evening, are the streets full of people or are they completely empty? You know, what does normal look like? Because when you're out there conducting a clandestine act, the last thing you want to do is stand out, right? And if you are in the middle of your clandestine act and something goes badly wrong, it's the ability to fall back and fade into that pattern of normal that will literally save your life and that of your asset. The same is true for you. You have automatic patterns of thought, belief, and behavior that drive your activity. Those patterns that are strongest for you are probably invisible to you. And here's why. Because those things were forged in fire. They were created over the course of your life as you moved through in an effort to keep you relatively safe and comfortable and get you where you wanted to go. Now, here's where it starts to get really, really good. because. Those patterns that most often got you what you wanted, those were the ones that you started practicing again and again and again in all kinds of different situations. And you got really, really good at them. So they they very literally became your greatest strength. Now, here's the thing. When you're a spy on the street, once you understand how a pattern works, you can actually use it. You can trigger that pattern on demand to create a situation on the ground that gives you the one opportunity you need to take that operational act. I teach you how to do the same thing with your internal patterns. To use your internal patterns to actually create the opportunity, I call it the gap, because in the world of espionage, we actually call that a gap act. You create your gap because it is in the gap that your miracle happens. It is in the gap that your operational act happens on the street. It is in the gap that your miracle, that leadership move that you want to make, that impossible goal that you want to go for, it is in the gap that that happens. And what I help you do is create that gap inside your own limiting beliefs. That's so, so interesting. And I love the way that you marry this work that you've done with life and how we actually live and how we're actually probably sometimes caught up or trapped in the patterns that we've had for so so very long and the place that i find oh i'm forgive me for interrupting i was just going to say you know the place that i find that people so often get stuck is we've been told oh you have to break the pattern you have to overcome the limiting belief you have to get rid of that but remember, those things were forged in fire. They, they are very literally your greatest strength, which means when you try to get rid of it or break through, have you ever tried to break a habit? Of course. Uh, yeah. And how was that? Sometimes yes. It can be really hard, right? Yep. It's not, they call it a habit for a reason, right? Exactly. Exactly. So how about instead of trying to break it, we just learn to use it. It's way easier. It's way faster. And I don't know about you, but I know that me and most of my clients are kind of done with the working hard thing. 
we're looking for an easier path. We need an easier path. And again, because those things were forged in fire, they are your greatest strength. They carry with them a unique capacity that it's, it's unique to every single one of us. It is in fact part of what makes you the leader, the kind of leader that you are. It's what makes you so good. So as soon as somebody tries to pull that away from you, yeah, on the one hand, part of you starts to fight to hold on to it, makes sense, which is why it feels so hard. But on the other hand, even if you could successfully overcome it, you'd wind up throwing out the baby with the bathwater. So then Martha, what are some of the do's and don'ts that you recommend for us as we lead into being better leaders, but being this new kind of leader that links arms with others and is supported by and supporting others? How do we tie in pulling in those things that are our greatest strengths that have been forged in fire? What are your do's and don'ts for making it a success? So number one, as far as I'm concerned, is lead, remember that leadership is an inside job. It comes from the inside out. Leadership is way more than getting other people to do what you want them to do. Leadership is about you claiming your space on the planet and being that fullest version of yourself, of yourself, as opposed to contorting yourself to fit somebody else's mold. So that's number one. Leadership is an inside job. Number two would be keep your focus on what matters most to you. Because those, those things that light you up, those things that you're good at, the things you're not good at, the things that you don't like, none of that's an accident. All of it is there with a specific intent to pull you toward that next version of you. And the fourth or the third thing that I would say is remembering that inner work until you rub it up against real life in the real world and go for real results it's it's kind of just navel gazing so the idea is to yes leadership is an inside job yes it starts with keeping your focus on what matters most to you and then take it to the next level okay so where am i running against this in the outer world. So you can use your relationship with, oh, time, for example, as a mirror to say, oh, where am I feeling stretched then? You can use your relationship with money. And oh, by the way, as a spy, I can go on for days about the relationship between money and life force and, and impact. I will just say right here that one of the very first lessons that they teach you in the world of espionage and espionage tradecraft school is get your target to take money from you because then you have control over them. Let that sink in for a minute. How many times have we given over control of what we wanted in our lives, of what we wanted for ourselves, of, of the difference that we were here to make because we ac accepted money from someone else? So for example, if you're inside an organization, where have you tolerated something that you know is not a great fit for you because they paid you? When it, where have you tolerated a client that's not a great fit because they paid you? And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that you flake out on your commitments, but what I'm saying is let's pay attention. Let's pay attention to the correlation. That is so right on point, Martha. So, so on point. So let's say, okay, we're recognizing that leadership is an inside job. While you were talking, I was, of course, scribbling furiously, taking copious notes because this is really great stuff. We recognize leadership is an inside job. So we've, you know, done the work on ourselves and we're keeping our focus on what matters most to us. And we're looking to see, okay, where in our lives mm -hmm. is there an opportunity for us to make that correlation if you were this is a very practical show i mean i love for us to be able to leave with something in hand to say okay i'm going to take this and martha said this so i'm going to run with this today mm -hmm. what do we do next what is the very very next step for us if you were to give us one piece of homework if there's one thing that you'd want for us to leave this call with and implement in our lives today what would that thing be that thing would be this one word fascinating. 
your new favorite word just became fascinating. Because so often in the world of leadership, when someone tells us to do inner work, okay, first of all, nobody ever actually tells us how to do the inner work, which is the whole basis of my business. I actually lead you through the inner work. I mean, what the heck is inner work? Is it sitting on my tuffet and going, hum, nah, 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 nah. no, there, it, it's, it's like doing your internal pushups and sit-ups. And that's what I do with my clients. But here's the thing. We've been taught to believe that inner work is about, let me look at myself, see what all's wrong with me, and let me go see what I can fix it. And I'll just beat myself with a stick until I become that perfect person. Talk about a recipe for disaster, right? <laughs> Instead, I want you to adopt this new favorite word, fascinating. Isn't it fascinating? that I booked my calendar so tightly that I didn't even leave room to eat lunch today? Isn't it fascinating that I do that routinely? Isn't it fascinating that I'm getting ready to go speak with a client or make a pitch to a corporation and I feel my entire body scrunch up wondering, oh my God, what if they don't understand me or will they? Isn't it fascinating that I react that way? Because here's what's going to happen. When you adopt the word fascinating as your new favorite word, what comes with it is this inherent curiosity. What comes with it is this inherent ability to say, wow, look at me. Isn't it fascinating? I booked my calendar that tightly. Wow. It's pretty amazing that I have the internal capacity to pull that off. And isn't it fascinating that part of me thinks if I were to give myself an actual lunch that people would, quote unquote, people might think I was slacking. Isn't that fascinating? Because this is what happens with that one simple word is because I want you to have a framework to be able to look at yourself without the judgment, to look at yourself without the stick. Because again, it's no mistake that you love what you love. It's no mistake you're good at what you're good at. It's no mistake that you're not good at some things. So let's take a look at that and own that because that's part of what makes you you. This is a perfect, perfect, I would say, activity for us to really lean into as we're going into a new year. It's always a great opportunity for us to look back at the old year and to say, okay, what worked well? What didn't work so well? And I feel like adding in that qualifier isn't it fascinating that i did things that way and they had this result mm -hmm. and i think being able to look at it from that lens without the judgment but just sort of like an outside observer is perhaps one of the most valuable things that we can do i absolutely love us love 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 that these are the ideas that you're bringing forward any final words for us anything that you would like us to take away from here? Any tips or tools or tricks of the trade or any little hacks that you think might get us through? Oh, there's so, so many. Um, the other thing that I would add is, you know, look for, deliberately look for the places that you're getting stuck so that you can apply that word fascinating. Because I promise you, every single place that you're getting stuck carries inside of it a quality, a capacity that makes you the cut above in that particular area. It, it is unique to you. It is a unique capacity to you. So again, going back to the example that I was talking about on the calendar, you know, that's one place to see, oh, isn't it fascinating that I can actually do all of this? Isn't it fascinating that my body will tolerate it to a certain point. Isn't it fascinating that, huh, my body can tolerate this without my giving it attention. Wonder what would happen if I maybe deliberately took the same drive that I used to cram my calendar. Well, maybe I could take that same drive, that same determination and plug in 30 minutes for lunch just as a, a random everyday example. 
But these are the kinds of things that I want you to look for in yourself. Because when you're stepping up to play a bigger game, the world is looking for the next higher version of you which means that your relationship with these external elements of action, I call them external elements of action, time, energy, money, relationships, and results. And results include past results, but also future results, as in your goals, what you're going for. And as you step into this next level version of yourself to play a bigger game, to make a bigger difference, your relationship with these five elements of action has to shift. It has to shift from making those things, things you control, defend, defend against, manage, slice and dice until they have, it has to shift so that those become the elements that you use to leverage you, to create more of you, that more internal bandwidth. Those become your tools. Fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> so much. Oh my goodness. It would be amazing if we had more time. And so Martha, I think there is an opportunity for you to really come back on the show and share some more of your gifts and talents with us. People are going to want to know how can they reach out to you and what you have going on right now that maybe they can plug into so that you can help them in this new year to get themselves to that next level without the stress and the stray, but with looking at their lives and being fascinated by it. How can people connect with you? So there are a couple of things. So I have one gift that is absolutely for everybody. It's called CIA Spy Secrets to Making Goals Work for You. You may have seen it already. You can also go to my website and you can get it there. You can also go to MarthaAWilson.com forward slash goals dash gift. That is a three-part mini course, and it takes you through what's going on inside of you when you go to step up for that bigger goal, for that bigger dream, for that bigger objective for yourself, and gives you a chance to uncover, you know, well, what is the fascinating piece that right now might be getting in my way, and that when I unpack it, I have the opportunity to turn it into the thing that slingshots me closer to that goal. So that's the piece that's for everybody. The piece that may not be for everybody just yet is I am inviting people to do a what I'm calling a little 30-day accelerator one-on-one -on -one work with me. And this is specifically for somebody who already knows what this big thing that they're going for might be. No, you don't have to have the specific details. You don't have to, please don't know the how. You don't need to know the how. We're not about the how. This is about the what. But you think you know what that thing might be. And you already know that there is some inner game stuff that's probably getting in your way when you're going for that. And you're ready to get that out of the way. You're tired of sucking it up, muscling through, downsizing your dreams to fit your current reality, and you're ready for a breakthrough. If that's you, just send me an email, martha at marthaawilson.com, put the word accelerate in the subject line, and we'll hop on the phone. We'll talk it out. We'll see, you know, what would constitute that breakthrough for you and what might be standing in the way. And are you a great fit for this 30 day accelerator? It's hot. It's fast. It's getting you moving. Beautiful. At the end of every call, we actually pull a card from one of the many thoughts for the day card decks that we have. Fun story, Martha. Over the Christmas break, like, you know, that little break between Christmas and New Year. Isn't it fascinating that I took some time off and I was supposed to be focused on me and focused on family. But what did I do while I was off? I created this whole card deck. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Very fascinating. So anyway, suffice to say that that, me, that says about me that... I can do a lot of things. Now we need to look a little more deeply and see how can we use that talent to move to the next level. See, I was listening, I was learning. So I pulled a card for us and it's interesting because it's, uh, I did these cards, they're the Gross Matter cards and they're basically just little quotes from a lot of the different anthologies that Ladies Power Lunch members have contributed to over the years. And this one is a quote from Denise Simpson. And she says, it's from our Success in Any Season book. And it says, success was discovering my courageous heart as I got knocked down and picked myself up. The greatest success is knowing that I am love, 
how would this apply to what you're sharing with us today? Oh my gosh, it couldn't be more perfect. It couldn't be more perfect. The name of the three-day workshop that I run is called Unflappable, the Inner Game Experience, because here's mm -hmm. the thing. When you learn how to reverse engineer your own internal success path, that is the thing that makes you completely unflappable. It makes you limitless. And what she's describing in that card is when you can see how and why you fall down or the world takes you down, when you understand precisely how and why you created your own rise from the ashes, there's, there's no end to that. Yes. There's wow. no end to that potential. There is no end to the good that you can do in the world for yourself and every other life you touch. I love it. I love it so much. Thank you, Martha. You are amazing. So, so pleased to have you on the show. And I'm really looking forward to us connecting and seeing how we can get you back as we're going into our next series, which is going to be something really, really exciting, everyone. So I really want you to stay tuned to our show because our next series is going to be just as amazing as this series on leadership. Martha, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks everybody for joining us for the show. And we'll see you guys on the next show. Bye everyone.